Well, and food development is a big focus of the ABC this week and to talk about the government's plans for Northern Australia, amongst other political issues today, we're joined by the Federal Agriculture Minister, Barnaby Joyce. Barnaby Joyce, good morning. Good morning, Virginia. I know that recently you've rejected assertions that Australia should be described as becoming the food bowl of Asia. Why is that phrase no longer meaningful for you? Uh, well, Virginia, we only produce about 1% of the agricultural product of the world and to start saying that this country that produces 1% of the agricultural product is going to be a you know, predominant player on the global stage is not correct. Uh, the other thing, Virginia, is when we start talking about we're going to be the food bowl of Asia, we've, we've, at our very best, we feed about 60 million people now. If we doubled it, well, 120, 150 million people, we couldn't even feed half of Indonesia. So we can't feed half our neighbour. Stop talking about we're going to feed the whole of Asia. And the other part about that, Virginia, of course, is when you say, I'm going to be the food bowl of Asia, every other farmer in every other country goes, Oh, well, hang on, that, that's my job and my family's income you're taking and I don't want to uh, be a threat to them because we're not. So when we hear from these farmers in Northern Australia saying you know, that they, they just need the markets, they just need to establish the consumer, give the consumer what they want, be consistent about that, are they, are they pitching their, their, their views too high as well? No, I think they're, they're in the right sp space at the right time. I've spent a lot of time in Virginia with the Indonesians. Mm. We're about 9,000% increase in our live cattle exports now, even into Vietnam. A lot of these markets we never knew about in the past are really kicking a goal for us. And we've just got to make sure we build those relationships up are they, uh, like when you think about Northern Australia, think about Darwin, it's vastly closer to the island of Java with about 150, 100, you know, close to 200 million people just on that island than it is to Canberra. And so they've got a, there's a natural symbiosis there. There, there is, but what you need there is infrastructure. We heard the Prime Minister yeah. say that he wanted to be the infrastructure Prime Minister. If you're one of the wealthier cattle, cattle growers in, in this country, in the Kimberley, and you've got your, your entirely vertically integrated industry from abattoir all the way off, you'll be fine. But if you're a smaller producer and the infrastructure's not there, how do you achieve the outcome? Uh, that's a very good point, Virginia, and I've, I've started to speak to that in my white paper and then try to, without giving too much away, the role of cooperatives, which have been very strong in the past, making sure that we have the right infrastructure packages in place to create those internodal connections. Transport co costs in the north are a killer. But uh, infrastructure we've built in the past that people used to mock, such as a, uh, Adelaide to Darwin railway line, mm. they're really starting to pay a dividend now. And we've got to start working out how we connect the dots of other railway lines and also uh, cr create the cooperative so that a range of people can bind together to create crucial infrastructure so they can get the flow through on their product as well. You connect the dots though largely with money. You've got to get cash to build that infrastructure. As Agriculture Minister in this budget um, situation, are you confident over time of getting that? Well, Virginia, I've actually been in discussions with a range of proponents of private money who said, well, we're happy to build the infrastructure because there's... So like a PPL? Yeah, well, some of them are just, they don't even need the, the, the public involved. They're, they're quite happy to be in that space because people know that uh, through these mineral provinces as well, that if you have full slots, which is how railway lines lot work, if yep. you've got full slots, they you've got the capacity for it to be cash flow positive. They understand this. They've got coal on one side of our nation, they've got iron ore on the other. Uh, it's, it's long been the case that people say, well, if we could connect, we'll never actually have a backload. We'd be able to have full trains going in both directions yep. and uh, these would work. The trick for agriculture is to make sure we piggyback on the back of that type of infrastructure because agriculture finds it tough to pay for it, but mining can pay for it. All right, well, look, let's um, stay, go to some other political news. And, of course, this links in with it because our key market for a lot of this is, of course, China. And last night we heard Clive Palmer on Q&A uh, sledging China generally. He was speaking specifically in relation to his, his legal fights, but it was a pretty broad spray. Mm. So, right, let's have a little listen to what Clive Palmer had to say on Q&A last night. We'll be suing this week. It'll be in the Supreme Court. You can report it on the ABC mm. and all this will be thrown out. But it won't stop the fact that the Chinese government wants to bring workers here, destroy our wage system. Mm. It won't stop the fact that they want to take over our ports and get our resources for free. So far they've shipped to 200 million... Uh, sorry, $200 million worth of iron ore out of this country without paying for it. Okay. And I don't mind standing up against the Chinese bastards and stopping from doing it. And I'll be doing that, mate. S don't worry about that. Question. We'll be suing them and I'll be answering the question. We've had three judgments in the Federal Court and the Supreme Court of Western Australia and an arbitration against these Chinese mongrels. Uh, and I'm, I'm saying that's because they're communists, because they shoot their own people, they haven't got a justice system and they want to take over this country. And we're not going to let them do it. Clive Palmer, your response? Um, not helpful. Um, Clive started with a company called China First. Uh, he wanted to make a lot of money out of dealing with China. Uh, he, you can't blame the Chinese for being tough business people. That's what 
that's what business is about. Um, but the emotive and colourful language is uh, not the way that you do business. I think it might be a little bit of an insight to the rest of Australia on um, how negotiations can sometimes be febrile when you're trying to get through a budget as well. So that's an insight into the kind of man that the government's having to negotiate with? Well, uh, you know, I'm hoping that we can get our financial you know, the financial predicament that we're in. The first, last thing I heard of Clive last night before I decided to go to the gym and turn down the volume was that we didn't have a debt problem. And when people say things like that, I just go, you don't get it. You really don't get it. And uh, we have got a debt problem. We've got to fix it up. And if we don't fix it up, Virginia, as I say, we won't be having this conversation in 10, 15 years' time because there will be no ABC. Are those um, comments damaging to Australia's interests or really just to the, to the government's interests in terms of trying to negotiate a, a budget outcome that you'd like? No, they're damaging because you're a representative of our nation. You're one of 76 people. Uh, you represent three senators. Your party represents three senators. Three senators with that incredible honour to, to wear the uh, little red pin in their lapel to call themselves a senator of their respective state. And as such, um, other countries see that as a, as a as a reflection of an attitude. It is not there. Uh, we want to do business with China. We want to trade with China. They're a crucial trading partner to our nation. Uh, we know that business is always going to be tough, that negotiations are always going to be tough. That's the way the world is. We uh, ac accept that and we respect that. Um, now, you can't just uh, drop your bundle on national television. That's just not the way it works. It's been three months since the federal budget was handed down. Whose responsibility is it that so little headway has been made in getting key spending cuts through the budget in order to get in place what you say you want to do? Well, it's a, it's a, it's a hard game, Virginia. It's, it, we have uh, a range of different parties and you have to try and get all these stars to align to get something through. Now, You're not the only government to deal yeah. with a difficult Senate. You're not the only government to deal with well, a Senate that, where other people hold the ballots of power. Well, we've always accepted that basically the Greens and the Labor Party will always... The, the Greens will never vote for us, and they never have. Or oh, they'll be on very, very rare occasions. So you can always work on the Greens and the Labor Party basically being a block. You might but, get them on the paid parental leave scheme. But, but this time, it's, it's, it's different. Um, we've got uh, the Palmer United Party, we've got... Um, motoring enthusiast party. We've got still we've got Nick and uh, from uh, Nick Xenophon and 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 uh, Mr. Madigan from the DLP, and they're all good fellow. They're all good people, I think. Um, but you, you know, if we give everybody what they want, then what we actually have as a package is chaos and that just doesn't work. The company behind one of Australia's largest solar power plants, Silex Mildura, has um, just said that it's abandoning the project, in part due to uncertainty over the renewable energy target. What's your response to that? And should the target be scrapped altogether? Well, it's under review. Um, the big driver in the Australian public, I believe, that what I pick up, Virginia, is the price of power. Uh, I, you don't have to walk far down the street, and that's exactly the, the, the question that bounces back to you. Uh, we've got to make sure we have this discussion about how we do renewables and I, you know, hydroelectricity is a great renew renewable. How we do renewables and how we also make sure that um, we provide a price of power which is the fundamental of people's standard of living that's affordable into their house. If we can't do that... Um, but are you saying that uh, the price is being driven up by ventures such as this? Well, this is the discussion that I'm really focused on hearing because one side of the discussion says uh, renewables has an inordinate effect on the price of power and it's driving it up and others say, well, it, it doesn't that much. Because we saw modelling, independent modelling yesterday that was published in the Financial Review that showed just that. We're looking at, a, at, a, at the percentage of your power bill being one, two, maybe three percent due to renewables. So it's hard to make the argument out, isn't it? Yeah, well, I, see, Virginia, I hear two different arguments. I hear some talking of up to 30 percent and some talking of three percent. And I suppose the reason you've got a role in Cabinet is to sit down and say, well, where does the truth lie? And uh, that's really what we've got to try and drill down and find out. When you um, say so the Parliament re resumes next week, do you think you'll finally get the, uh, the mining tax repealed? Um, I don't, it's in the lap of the gods, Virginia, and um, you know, obviously Mr Palmer and his senators, but really they're not his senators, they're senators for their respective state. Jackie Lambie is a senator for Tasmania, uh, Dio Wang is a senator for Western Australia, and uh, you know, Glenn Lazarus as a senator for Queensland, they all have a responsibility to their state, that is their constituency, that is their, their actual boss, is the, their state, and it's what their states want. Sounds like you're trying to split them off from their leader. Uh, no, I'm trying to make sure that we don't have a chaotic situation because um, the Australian people deserve better than financial chaos and that's what we don't want but that's where we'll head to if we don't get some semblance of sanity in this.
process. Madam Joyce, nice to have you on the programme. Thank you. Thanks, Virginia. Thank you.